Okay, today we're answering once again viewer uh, questions. And uh, let's see. Uh, here we have this was a nice one. It's more of a comment than a question. It says, since this is about uh, comments too, I'd like to say thank you for our, your hard work. And I thank you for watching. Because I wouldn't be doing these videos if people weren't watching them. It'd be kind of a waste of time. So I appreciate that. Thank you. Um, it says, this next question, any chances of uh, doing more videos on Python, on making uh, isometric games, which are uh, kind of like a 2D games. I had to look it up because I didn't know what that was. 2D games that uh, kind of have things on an angle to give them kind of a 3D perspective. Um, and uh, more into textures with Blender series. Um, definitely something might get into in the future as far as more game stuff. I don't know about uh, the uh, isometric games because uh, I've never done anything like that. Uh, if I get into it, I'll definitely do videos on it. Um, I'm not sure if I'm going to be doing any Pi game tutorials here in the near future. Uh, I do get asked that a lot. Um, it's just not my main focus in life right now when it comes to computer stuff. I'm really hitting the JavaScript hard. I really hope to start maybe making some simple games with JavaScript, uh, which would make it easy to port them to uh, mobile devices, tablets, and phones and such. As far as textures and blenders, I do plan on doing more Blender tutorials in the uh, future. The um, thing is, right now, the big thing with Blender is Cycles, which I have not even touched yet. I'm still using the old Blender uh, default renderer, and that completely changes how textures work. Uh, once you get into the cycles. So once I learn that, I'll do some tutorials on it. Um, uh, then we got uh, Cyber Rebel uh, asked, um, how old were you when you got into computers and when did you start to program? Um, someday I actually, I've thought this for like a year now, I'd like to do like a, a uh, uh, Metal X uh, 1000 Origins, you know, just like comic books, you have like Wolverine Origins where it tells like, the story of how they got to where they are. I, I kind of want to do a video on that with me with my computer stuff. It's just, it's going to take some time. So I think I have a lot of good stories. But um, as far as when did I get into computers? When I was a kid, um, I was born in 81. Um, as far back as I can remember, I had a computer in my room. I originally lived in New York. And um, back in the early 80s uh, to mid 80s, I had an IBM computer in my room. It was the family computer, but for some reason it got put in my room, which made me very happy. Old DOS-based machine. I couldn't tell you anything really about it other than it had two uh, large 5-inch floppy disk drives, which was so cool that it had two drives, uh, even though we never really used them. Um, and when you turn on that machine, even though it was a DOS-based machine, it didn't go to the DOS prompt. It had some sort of menu installed where you can scroll up and down with the arrow keys. No mouse. Uh, and get to stuff. And we had a basic word processor. We had uh, this early version of Print Master, I think it was called, where you can make like cards and print them up and fold the paper. Um, and and I, I loved it. I thought it was awesome. And I would uh, just be creative with that. Um, like the word processor, it was a very basic, once again, DOS, basically like text editor, but it did have some formatting things. I would do school projects on it. I did figure out a way that you could like draw lines in it and I would like make maps of my neighborhood inside the Word documents, um, inside the um, uh, the Printmaster program. You could draw pictures by drawing with big old pixels. You would just draw with blocks. And I actually used to get like sheets of transparency paper, trace pictures out of comic books, tape it to the screen and then trace over them. Um, using it, I'm going like this, but there was no mouse, I would go arrow, 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 space, or whatever to add a block, and I would draw pictures like that, and then I would modify them a little bit. Uh, if anybody remembers um, the animator, um, it was made by the people who made Etch-a-Sketch, and it was a little thing, and you would, it was electronic, like an electronic Etch-a-Sketch, and you could have, I think, like 12 images, and then play an animation. I had one of those as a kid and I would kind of do that with Printmaster. I would draw all these pictures, put them all in a folder, and then use the arrow keys to scroll through them and make it look like it was animated. Um, so, I mean, th these are my first experiences with computers. My uncle was the first person I knew who had th Windows 3.1. I used to go over there and play with um, Paintbrush and I used to make little animations in Paintbrush. If you're curious how I did that, I'll do a video on that. Just ask below. Once again, I hope to do some sort of 
maybe Origins video when I have the time. Um, so those are my first experiences with computers. Um, and actually, uh, even though it was a DOS machine, it was probably okay just to shut the machine off when you're done. My father showed me if you go to the menu, you go down, you hit exit. When you hit exit, it would bring you to the DOS prompt. And then he would have me type exit, and then it would exit out of DOS, and then it was safe to turn down the machine. Well, uh, out of curiosity, I was like, well, if I type exit and exits, obviously I could probably type other stuff there. Otherwise, why would it ask me to type exit if that's the only thing I could type? So I used to go into the DOS prompt having no clue what I was doing. Um, and I would type random things thinking, hey, maybe I'll get something. So it's like most time I would type something and it would say command not found, command not found. Um, and I was trying to single words and I mean, I was just a little kid. I was probably seven or eight at the time. And uh, so I was just, I mean, my vocabulary probably wasn't huge. So I would type different things. And I think the first word I typed that got something other than command not found was the word copy. I typed in copy, hit enter, and I don't remember exactly the message. Obviously, you got to give it parameters. Um, I wasn't doing that, but I was just like, whoa, it didn't say command not found. So I tried typing all these co copy, all these different things, and I never really got anywhere. I think the next word I got was probably help, which probably brought up some sort of help screen that I didn't understand at that time. But I was just amazed that I was finding these words that were saying different things on the screen, even though I had no clue what I was doing. Um, so you could maybe say that was my first experiment with programming. Um, probably wasn't until years, years later, um, probably uh, middle school or even high school. Uh, once again around, uh, if you watch my previous tutorial, once I started playing Doom and was able to start manipulating the game, I was doing a lot more in the DOS command prompt because a lot of the editors were DOS-based uh, editors. Um, and I think I started getting to batch files. Um, and eventually I got into Visual Basic and I love Visual Basic. Um, and I used Visual Basic probably for like eight, nine years, you know, all through high school and most of my 20s till I was probably about uh, uh, 20, yeah, 24, 25, uh, which is when I started using Linux and then I moved away from Visual Basic. And uh, the thing about Visual Basic was I could do a lot of stuff. I figured out how to open up sockets and send messages to it so that I could make a program that I could install on someone's computer and then I could send my own commands to eject the CD-ROM drive. I mean, I was doing some pretty neat stuff, but in reality, I had no clue what I was doing. I just knew I typed this, this happened, I could do this and this happened, but I didn't understand why or exactly how it worked. I didn't even know how variable work, variables work. I would actually make text fields and type stuff in them and then get the text instead of actually using variables. I would go look at the text in this text field and then I would hide the text field, which is funny because I've seen other programmers recently do that. And I just find it so funny because I used to do that and it's such a horrible thing to do. It's just like so sloppy. Um, so it wasn't until I really got into Linux where I actually started learning how to, to really program because I actually started understanding how things work. So I, even though I had been doing programs, programming for like 10 years, I really had no clue what I was doing uh, up until recent years. Um, so that is a little bit on how I started in computers. Um, uh, someone asked more Python and Bash videos, please. I'll eventually do more uh, Python videos. It'll be a while. I always do Bash videos because I know people are, uh, most of my viewers, that's probably their main interest. So I try to put out at least one Bash video a week. Um, I would like to hear uh, more about HTML5, which we probably will get into here, um, just because I'm doing a lot of videos on JavaScript and I'm doing a lot of work with um, with uh, JavaScript and CSS and HTML5. Um, so we'll definitely get a little bit into HTML. I think within other tutorials, I may not do tutorials specifically on HTML5, at least not a whole series, but you'll definitely see that in my videos coming up. Um, next question is, uh, they say, thanks for your hard work. You're welcome. Uh, they've been following my videos for a while. They like the Python videos. Uh, they were wondering where I get the time. It seems that uh, I have, uh, I don't have a lot of fires to fight. Once again, if you watch previous videos, I am a firefighter. Um, 
And firefighting is a great job for being able to do these videos because at least where I work, and it's different from department to department, we work 24 hour shifts, uh, which breaks down to, it breaks down to 56 hours a week, but really we work anywhere from 48 to 96 hours a week, which seems like a lot, but we do them all in, in 24 hour blocks. So I work 24 hours and then I have 48 hours off. Um, so, so even though I'm working a lot of hours, I have a lot of daytime off and um, really what I do is it's like I'll sit down and I'll spend two hours and I'll make five, six videos for the next, you know, two, three weeks and then I won't make any more videos for like, you know, two or three weeks and then I'll sit down and make five or six videos again. I'm actually, lately I've been making a lot of videos, you'll notice that I've been posting videos almost every day, um, but these videos here are pretty easy to record and there's not really any editing to do. Um, so that's where I get the time. So it's like uh, my wife also works a little bit, but like I'll come home, I'll watch our daughter for a bit, I'll put her, she takes two naps during the day for two hours each, so I can put her down and that gives me time to record these videos. So it, my videos, I try to keep my videos short, uh, I try to keep them under 15 minutes, if I can keep them under five minutes, even better. So I like once again, I can sit down and record five of them in an hour, hour and a half and, you know, do a quick editing job and upload them. So uh, that's it for these questions. I thank you for watching once again. Visit filmsbychris.com. That's Chris the K. There should be a link in the description of this video. Uh, I hope that you comment below, ask questions, and I hope that you have a great day.